Maybe you even start off on the bar because that's how tough it is. But when you do slowly start to put on weight, I swear you will wake up the next day after leg day. You'll be like, oh my gosh, you mother Hubbard. Simon I bought a hole here and today we're going to talk about things that you don't want to do. And do you know why I know you don't want to do them? Because I don't want to do them either. And every time they do come up in my gym routine, I have to force myself to get it done. Now I know I'm going to preempt the comments. Well, I always do this exercise. Good for you. Go and have a cookie. I'm really proud of you. I'm just talking about it from a general point of view. And if there's anybody out there watching these videos that is like me and they're not doing them and they follow the same path that I did, when you do start doing them and then you start seeing the gains and the evolution you want in the gym, you are going to be a happy panda. And we don't want to be sad pandas. We want to be happy pandas. Or I probably should have said happy penguins. Say hello to Gerald, the fitness mascot. So yes, basically, there are a bunch of exercises in the gym that we do naturally tend to stay away from because they're really horrible and they hurt. And I used to do this back in the day. And as soon as I sort of decided not to do this, because what is the point? I, you should always enjoy the gym, right? The gym should be fun first and foremost, because then you're actually going to be encouraged to go there in the first place. But you also have to kick your own ass. That's the true. You have to be intense. You have to make sure you're training really, really hard. Otherwise, your body won't respond and you won't get the muscle stimulus you're looking for. And that's why you want to add these in. Are they going to hurt? Absolutely. Are they going to be awkward? Absolutely. Are they going to make you hate yourself a little bit? Absolutely. But again, those are kind of three things that you need to do when you go to the fitness palace of love. So the first one is the Romanian deadlift or the stiff leg deadlift. You should be doing this on leg day, right? I don't care where you put it in there. Most people like to do squats because it's like an overall builder. And then you start kind of start isolating certain muscle parts in your legs. And everybody will do leg extensions and everybody will do the leg press and everybody will do hamstring curls, even though, oh no, hamstrings. But when it comes to the Romania deadlift, nobody touches it, even though it is the best exercise for your hamstring, or at least that's what I think. And for your overall leg development, like as soon as you start doing them and as soon as you start doing them correct, not only will you be like, flood me, man, I can't lift any weight. Like if your form is spot on, you're going to be starting off on the tens. Maybe you even start off on the bar because that's how tough it is. But when you do slowly start to put on weight, I swear you will wake up the next day after leg day. You'll be like, oh my gosh, you mother Hubbard. My hamstrings and my legs are killing me. And don't pretend you don't want doms. Everybody wants doms. And the clue is in the name too, in terms of how you are meant to do this. You go into a rack or you find a barbell or you can do it with dumbbells as well. It's completely up to you. You stand up straight, you grab said weight, and then you kind of stick your ass out and you bend over like one of those ducks that drinks the water. Remember Homer Simpson had one when he was working out from home. Not working out from home, just working from home. But you take my point, then he has to run in his moo moo to save the nuclear power plant. And if the little duck is doing it, you should be doing it as well. So again, would I put this on every single leg day you are doing? Probably. Or if you are working your legs twice a week, one of those sessions should have the Romanian or the stiff leg in it. And we're going to stick with legs, because again, these are the exercises that most people stay away from. Incorporate walking lunges and don't do any stupid walking lunges like oh i'm gonna pick it up i'm gonna walk four steps turn around do four steps no you take two dumbbells you find a nice big walking path in your gym and you go 20 reps that way and you have 20 reps coming back the other way and that as much as it may suck to hear counts as one set and you probably want to be aiming to around about four and the temptation here of course is to do little baby steps or kind of you know not go all the way down to the ground flub all that nonsense that's not what we're doing we are taking wide stances and we are getting those knees as close to the floor as possible hey man if you want to ricochet your knee off the floor you should do it and if you really want to be in pain and you really want to hate yourself drag your foot that's right never lift your foot off the floor and just drag it along the carpet yes you're probably going to ruin your shoes but i tell you when you get to that i don't know 22nd or 23rd rep whatever it would be you are going to be in tears and you are just going to want to punch yourself in the face because you think well if i transfer the pain to my face maybe it won't feel as bad in my legs right it won't it's still going to feel bad in your legs but please start doing them once again your legs are going to benefit your overall physique will benefit too many people are top heavy these days which is perfectly fine it's your life you can do whatever you want right we'll get back to legs again in a minute but just to not bore you as much weighted pull-ups now everybody kind of does pull-ups but i think what most people do is they divert to the lat pull-down machine there's nothing wrong with this it's essentially the same exercise but the problem with the lat pull-down machine is too many people cheat on it and again do i think you should cheat on those last few reps why the hell not 
not. If you can safely add a, you know, one, two, three reps that you wouldn't have done otherwise, even if they're just partials, absolutely you should do this. However, if you transfer the same kind of mechanism over to the lap pull-down machine and you add a bit of weight, I tell you, once again, you kick in some ass. And it doesn't have to be a lot of weight either. You see so many people get their weightlifting belt or their uh, strapping belt, whatever you want to call it, their dipping belt, and straight away they get a 20 or a 45 pounder if you're an American. It's like, why? Just because you've seen other people doing that with three or four of those in the gym doesn't mean you need to do it. Do some pull-ups, see what you can do. And maybe you even need to build up to the weighted one, but the weighted one is so good because you get such good progressive overload. But you can put a five kilogram plate on there, a 10 gram plate. Hey, you can do a 2.5 kilogram plate. The point is you are still doing a weighted pull up it still counts and if you want to find the confidence by building up to the big ones and of course seeing how many reps you can do absolutely but i think a great thing to do on back day is to just put one of these weights on and even if you can only manage two or three reps hey jump up right so you're on it and you go oh no i can't pull myself up i can't pull myself up safely hop up there and then just fight the negative right you hold yourself up as much as you can you flex and you squeeze those legs you squeeze that back and once again you'll wake up the next day and you'll never want to do it again and unfortunately that usually means that you've done something right right we go back to legs again it is a weak body part for most of us and it's all about the Bulgarian split squat. My word, do I both love and hate the Bulgarian split squat. So once again, you can figure out what it is because you've done squats before. And if you haven't, my word, start doing squats. But when you do a split squat, which is where you put one leg on a bench with your toes touching it and you stick the other one out in front of you and then do a squat, not only are you going to be able to go deeper than most people do on a squat. I mean, you should be going deep on a squat anyway, but they don't. Your balance and your core then comes into play. And I swear, start doing this without any dumbbells. What? Whatsoever. So get that bench, one foot on the back, one foot out in front of you, start doing the split squats with no weights. And by the time, if you're doing them correctly, you get to eight, nine, 10 reps, you're going to start to feel really sore. So when you do introduce some actual other weights too, I promise you it is going to be the worst experience of your life. Because seriously, as that rear foot is elevated, it's obviously going to make it more difficult. It'd be the equivalent of you doing a squat and me putting a plate on your head and saying, don't let the plate drop. All of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, don't let the plate drop. And it's the same here, not with plates, but with your balance. You're also placing a greater load on that front leg. But of course, when you've done one leg, you switch it and you do the other leg. So there is symmetry and there is balance here. And you're going to work your core strength and you're going to work your quads and you're going to work your hamstrings. And sometimes a little bit of calf can come into play as well. Now, look, I don't want to do these. Never have I run to the gym going, oh, it's Bulgarian split squat day. It's never happened. And the day it does, I'll look at myself in the mirror and spit on myself. But it's tremendous. It's really, really good. And like I say, if you start using these to incorporate them into a leg day, so let's say you are doing squats, then you're moving on to Romanian deadlifts, then you're doing all the machine work that we always do, and then you're doing Bulgarian split squat, I promise you, or at least I would like to hazard a 99.9% .9 guess that you'll sit down and go, man, I haven't been working legs hard enough, or at least I haven't been very my workouts enough and it's very easy to fall into a routine which is why you always want to take these sort of I'll call them the forgotten exercises and ensure they're in play and last but not least it's a more common one but again I think people deviate to the machines and that is some sort of chest or bench assisted row and the real reason you want to do this is because it hits your lats a bit better like so many people go over to the rowing machine I don't mean the cardio one I mean the the pulley machine and they do it on there but what you often see people doing is they go quite high because that's just the nature of the beast that just feels normal so you're going to bring your traps into gear and there's nothing wrong with that you want to be able to work your traps but you want to be able to work that sort of lower middle back more too and i mean barbell rows are amazing of course they're amazing but again if you want to do something else to ensure that you're not you know wibbly wobbling all over the place as you can do on a barbell row as well lay down on an incline bench with your uh, your chest towards the floor and you grab a couple of dumbbells and just naturally you are smashing that middle to well, it's more middle back than anything else but you're getting that latimus dorsi you're working on that v the what do you call it v shape that everybody wants I don't like saying V because it sounds like V shred. That must be where his name came from. But everybody wants that taper, right? And this is a great way to get there. And once more, you are going to have to start with a lighter weight. You probably can't lift as much as you think you're going to do, especially if you want that proper range of motion. Like if you're just smashing that partial, sure. But that's not what we're going for here. You want to be able to grab them, bring them right up, really squeeze, feel it in those lats, and then put them back down again. And it just works. It just does. And it's a great way to hit your back as opposed from going through the usual routine that most people do. Now, there's a ton of others, but I imagine that 
you know, somebody mentioned to me the other day, oh, Simon, do you think I should do a barbell bench press or should I do a dumbbell chest press? But I think most people do vary those up. That seems to be a more common one. But yeah, do not underestimate the benefit of a dumbbell chest press either. You know, the barbell bench press being a compound movement is always going to be excellent because other muscles are going to, you know, all of a sudden come into, come into play and they're going to start working. But the kind of squeeze and the kind of time under tension you can get with a dumbbell chest press means once again, you want to make sure you're going from one to the other. But there are a few exercises that nobody ever mentions. I don't mean on the internet. I mean, in their own personal routines. And they're also ones that I really, really would have preferred to introduce earlier. I'm not saying I would have been twice the size I am now. They're not miracle exercises, but they are really, really key to, as far as I'm concerned, any decent routine. And you don't have to do them every single week, but they should be good there for a good chunk. And if you want to cycle them out and then cycle them back in again, that's fine. But just don't ignore them entirely. Now, please do leave a comment below. You can write whatever you want. I don't care. I just do it for the YouTube algorithm, although I do like reading the comments too. So let me know if you like this video or you hate it so I can steer the content in the right direction. Click the bell, ding, ding, so you know other videos are going live. There will be another video on the channel, or on the video, I should say, in one second. Please do give it a click. If you're into supplements that I recommend, I would check out GorillaMind.com. Use the link in the description below and the code SIMON10 to get 10% off. I'm also in Greg Doucette's Power 13 Cookbook. You can check me out there. Again, sustainable diet, so you can match up to your training and get everything right on instagram and twitter at simon miller 316 patreon.com for simon 316 if you want to support me that way simon of the big cartel.com for merchandise i'm on cameo if you'd like a shout out otherwise good luck with your training and i will talk to you soon